To keep yourself updated, subscribe to Indigo Learn and click the bell icon and download our app OneFin to start learning on the go. So friends, let's now start Indigo's 12 that deals with income taxes. The corresponding standard that you would have learned under Indian GAAP is Accounting Standard 22 which also deals with income taxes. Before I get into the standard, I want to tell you a few things. The first thing is the fundamental difference between AS22 and AS12. AS22 was based on income approach and AS12 is based on the balance sheet approach. The ultimate amount of deferred tax asset or liability that you will calculate will be same, but the approach of calculating is different. AS22 is based on income approach, AS12 is based on balance sheet approach. The other thing that you have to understand here is this standard is to be learned conceptually. I know I have been telling this for all the standard, but this particular standard, if you don't learn it conceptually, if you start to buy hard things, then your life will be difficult. Okay. So please understand the underlying logic. Please understand the underlying concept. After that, any kind of scenario which is given to you in the exam or in the real life, you will be able to crack it. That is the second thing. Then the third important thing is this particular standard, which you know largely talks about current taxes and also deferred taxes can change the face of the PNL that you are presenting, especially with respect to deferred tax asset. You can recognize some deferred tax assets and you can actually, you know, turn around the PNL of the company. You can show higher profits so easily. Okay. I'm not saying it is easy to show, but you can use this standard to actually change the face of PNL. So as accountants, as CFOs, as auditors, you have to be careful about what is being recognized as a deferred tax asset or a deferred tax liability. It's very, very important. Okay. Now having understood this, let us jump into the standard and, you know, we'll start with current taxes. Okay. Current taxes is pretty much similar to what you would have learned under AS22. Then we'll understand about deferred taxes. But to understand deferred taxes, we need to understand about something called a tax base. Then we also need to understand something about a temporary difference. Okay. Under temporary difference, we have deductible temporary difference and taxable, taxable temporary difference. All of these nomenclatures may sound scary, but if you remember the logic, if you understand the logic, then these nomenclatures are secondary. Okay. So we'll get into the standard. We'll understand few terms. Okay. I'll present you one simple illustration to explain why is deferred taxation necessary. And we'll understand in the same illustration, what is current tax, what is, you know, deferred tax and all of that. And with that understanding, we will move forward in the standard. So now what we'll do is we'll take a very simple example and understand what is this whole thing about accounting profit, taxable profit, current taxation, deferred taxation, differences and all of that using this simple example with one adjustment and subsequently we can add more layers of adjustment and understand in depth. Okay. So assume for a moment there is a business and we are preparing the PNL account for the business and we'll also be preparing the statement to compute taxable profit and income tax thereon. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll take a very simple example and we'll understand how do we calculate accounting profit, which we already know. How do we calculate taxable profit, which most of you would be already knowing. And what is this current tax, deferred tax, what are these differences and all of that. And the reason to recognize something as deferred tax. See, all these computations you know. But we also need to understand why are we recognizing these things called deferred tax asset or deferred tax liability. So with this example, we'll try to understand that. Okay. So assume for a moment, this business has only one item of PPE cost at beginning of year one at which they were purchased. It was purchased is 120,000. Okay. A very simplistic assumption. And let us say useful life of this is three years for the purpose of the business or for purpose of accounting as per India 16. And there is no residual value. So depreciation per year is how much? 1,20,000 divided by 3. That comes to 40,000. So 40,000 is the depreciation that you will recognize in the books every year. Okay. That is one thing. Now, this is accounting. The same thing for taxation. Uh, I'm ignoring that, you know, we have this WDB method and all of that. Assume for a moment, this property plant and equipment has a special deduction under income tax, under depreciation. And as per that, 50% of the cost can be claimed in the first year and remaining 50% of the cost can be claimed in the second year. So cost is 1,20,000, but useful life is two years or you can say depreciation directly. Depreciation rate is 50% per annum on SLM basis. Okay. Forget for a moment or ignore that, you know, income tax rule that it has to be on WDV block basis and all of that. Assume for a moment it is depreciation 50% 
on SLM basis. So, what is the depreciation per year? It will be 120,000 multiplied by 50%, you get 60,000 and this 60,000 is for 2 years. This is for 3 years. Okay. Now, let us assume some numbers in the PNL and let us see what will be the accounting profit, what will be the taxable profit. So, let us say profit and loss. Income, say for example, income for a particular year or year, particular year, let us say year 1, 2 and 3. Okay. For these 3 years, income is 2 lakhs. Okay. Income is 2 lakhs and it is 2 lakhs in each of the year, no difference. Okay. Then less expenses except depreciation. All other expenses except depreciation, assume for a moment, is 1 lakh. 1 lakh here, 1 lakh here, 1 lakh here, it does not change. Okay. Then depreciation for the purpose of books. See, when I am saying profit and loss, this is as per books. How much is the depreciation? We just calculated 40,000 per year. So, 40,000 first year, 40,000 second year, 40,000 third year. Okay. Then, you get something called as profit before tax. What is profit before tax? 2 lakhs minus 1 lakh minus 40,000. You get 60,000 first year, 60,000 second year, 60,000 third year. Okay. Now, from this profit after tax, you will deduct provision for taxation. Okay. Now, assume for a moment something called in days 12 or AS 22 did not exist. So, what would you have done? You would have simply calculated the taxable profit and based on the taxable profit, you would have calculated the tax and accordingly made a provision. Okay. Now, there are two ways to do this. Normally, what you would do? You would say, okay, computation of taxable income, right? Profit before tax as per books is how much 60,000, 60,000, 60,000 add depreciation as per books which is 40,000, 40,000, 40,000 less depreciation as per tax which is minus, I am using a minus sign here minus 60,000, here also actually I can use minus, so it becomes easy, just let me update this, ok. So, add depreciation as per books, less depreciation as per tax, 60,000, 60,000 and third year it is 0 because there is no depreciation for the third year, right. Now, what is the taxable income? Taxable income is 60,000 plus 40,000 minus 60,000, it is 40,000 here, 40,000 here and 1 lakh here. Assume a tax rate of 25 percent, which is 40,000 multiplied by 25 percent, 10,000, 10,000 and 25,000. Okay. Now, this you would have taken it as provision here, saying provision for taxation is 10,000, 10,000 and 25,000. So, your profit after tax will be 60 minus 10, 50 here, 50 here and 35 here. Now, if you prepare this PNL, this kind of PNL and present it to someone, okay, what would they think? If they just look at, let us say, a ratio, let us just add one ratio, let us say net profit to sales ratio, okay. How much is that? 50,000 divided by 2 lakhs. So, first year it is 25 percent, 25 percent third it has come down to 18 percent. The earnings per share also would come down. Everywhere it we would feel that this business is not doing good. But in fact, if you see the sales have remained the same, the expenses have remained the same. There is no growth, I agree, but there is no decline as well. But the net profit gives us a different picture. The net profit makes us believe that there is a downturn in the business. The business is not doing good. And this difference has come only because of the taxation. 
Why? Because in the books we said we will claim depreciation 40,000, 40,000, 40,000 but the income tax authority said keep your depreciation aside, you will have to take or claim depreciation as per income tax rules which is 50, which is 60,000 and 60,000. Okay. And please note depreciation has to be provided as per the taxation rules for computation of taxable income and you cannot increase or decrease the rate. You cannot say that, okay, you cannot say I want to claim lower depreciation. You cannot say I want to claim higher depreciation. It is a standard format, standard rates. The block of asset concept, WDV method, in some cases SLM method, it has to be followed as per taxation rules. Okay, you don't have a choice. So, coming to this, the difference in net profit has come only because of the, dif the difference in taxable income and that has arisen because of the timing in which you claim the depreciation. In books, you claim depreciation over three years period. For tax, you claim depreciation over a two year period, right? That is why this extra liability, that is why this extra liability or burden has come in year three. Okay, I hope this is clear. Now, this computation, we can also do it, you know, slightly differently by, you know, using the same format here. computation of taxable income okay you can just say income 2 lakhs expenses except depreciation 1 lakh then depreciation 60,000 60,000 and 0 so you get 40, 40, 1 lakh that is what you have got 40, 40, 1 lakh okay and you can see the difference has come only because of depreciation I have not introduced other terms yet. Now what the standard says is you have computed accounting income on some basis and you are computing tax based on the taxation rules okay and there is a difference between the accounting profit and the taxation profit what is accounting profit accounting profit is this 60 60 60 what is taxation profit taxable profit is 40 40 1 lakh okay the totality over a period of 3 years is 180 here and 180 here but there is a difference on year on year basis so because the accounting profit is different you have to you have to also ensure that the tax expense is matched with the accounting profit the tax expense is matched with the accounting profit now what do i mean by that what do i mean by that is i have a profit before taxation of 60000 okay and i am providing for tax only considering 40000 of income i am not providing tax expense for this difference of 20000 though i am showing profit i am not booking the corresponding tax expense this is violating the matching concept. What is it violating? Matching concept because you have recognized income but corresponding tax expense you have not recognized. The other thing that you need to understand is though I am paying low tax in the first two years, there is a higher tax burden in the third year because of this difference in depreciation. See in year one and year two we paid less tax but we are paying higher tax in year three. Now, tell me one thing, are we paying higher tax in year 3 because we have higher income? No, our income has not increased. Then why are we paying higher tax in year 3? We are paying higher tax in year 3 because we paid less tax in year 1 and year 2. So, what the standard says is, see, in year 1 and year 2, you know that in the future, you have to pay a higher tax. You have to pay a higher tax in the future and that is also because of the depreciation difference in year 1 and year 2. So, there is a liability to pay tax in the future which you have to recognize. In other words, what the standard says is, I'll, I'll, explain, the, I'll explain the logic first from the income approach, then I'll come to the balance sheet approach. What the standard says is, you recognize depreciation of 40,000 here in the books, right? And you recognize depreciation of 60,000 as per tax because of which you are paying less tax today. You are paying less tax today and in the future you will pay a higher tax. So, there is a liability in the future recognized today because the income pertains to current year. So, this difference of 20,000 for that we need to recognize the expense. So, difference in depreciation if you see is 40,000 and 60,000 it is 20,000 here 20,000 here and 40,000 here so what we need to do is to the extent of this difference in depreciation we need to compute what is the tax impact i know i am following the income approach i'll come to the balance sheet approach if you understand the income approach it will be easier for me to explain you explain to you the balance sheet approach so tax at the rate of 25% comes to 20,000 multiplied by 25% which is 5,000 here 5,000 here and 10,000 here. So, if you see here, 
After provision for taxes, you need to have one more provi provision or expense that is deferred tax expense, which is 5000, 5000 and 10,000 and if you update this to include this minus 5000, 45, 45 and 45,000, right. So, by introducing a deferred tax expense concept, we have ensured that the profit is streamlined the relevant tax expense is matched with the income of the corresponding year. So, here we have additional expense of 5, additional expense of 5 and why are we saying plus 10,000 here? So, basically in the third year, you are actually have to, you are actually required to pay a higher tax. If you come to the third year, you are actually required to pay a higher tax of 25,000. This higher tax you are paying because there is a carry forward of differences from the past two years. So, we have already accounted for that as a liability in the previous two years. So, in this year when you pay it off, you are actually reversing it. So, your tax will be 25,000 which you have to pay and 10,000 reversal of this 5,000 and 5,000 the profit after tax comes to 45,000. Now, this also ensures that effective tax rate is 15,000 sum of these two divided by 60,000 that is, let me update the symbol, 25 percent here, 25 percent here, 25 percent here. If I did not have this, then my effective tax rate would have been 17, 17 and 42 percent which does not represent the true picture. So, we are basically trying to match the income and the corresponding tax expense. Now, a lot of you have, now a lot of you may have a doubt that, sir, can we directly do accounting profit multiplied by tax rate as the total tax expense? Please don't do that because there are some items which are not taxed at all. There are some items which may be taxed, you know, at a subsequent date. You know, there are a lot of differences like this. So, don't directly say that, okay, I will take 60,000 profit before tax. I'll multiply 60,000 by 25 percent, I'll get 15,000, that is my total tax expense. You should not do that. We have to separate that between what we are required to pay now and what we may pay in the future or any other benefit that we may get in the future, okay. So, that is one aspect which you have to be clear with. It is not that we will take the tax rate and multiply the accounting profit and get the accounting tax expense. That is not the approach, okay. Now, here few things that we have understood so far is that if I am paying a less tax today, and I have to pay a higher tax in the future, there is a deferred tax liability today. And the reverse of this, if I am paying a higher tax today and I will pay less tax in the future, there is a deferred tax asset. So, there can be a liability and there can be an asset. Now, this is the income approach. This is the income approach. Now, by now, we have seen few concepts. We will go to the definition subsequently. We have seen few concepts. One, accounting profit. So, this profit before tax as per books is called accounting profit 60,000, 60,000, 60,000, okay. Then taxable profit or taxable income is the tax that you have calculated here, taxable income is the taxable income that we have calculated here. This is the taxable profit. We can do it both ways. Here also we have done it the same way, okay. Then the tax that you have to pay as per the income tax provisions in the current period is called current tax. What is that current tax? This. 10,000, 10,000 and 25,000, this is called current tax. The tax which arises due to differences is called, this one is called deferred tax. Now, please note friends, I am again repeating, this is difference based on income approach. I will now take you through the balance sheet approach and tell you how do we calculate deferred tax in that case, okay. Now, balance sheet approach when we talk about is all about balance sheet as per books and balance sheet as per income tax. Now, this balance sheet as per income tax is called as the tax base, okay. We do not prepare a separate balance sheet for taxation purpose, but for us to understand, once you are through with a couple of, you know, items there, then you will be able to understand easily what is this, you know, balance sheet, what is this balance sheet amount and what is this tax base. So, basically what we will do is, in the books of account, what is the balance of an asset or a liability? Liability will come to it separately. What is the balance of an asset in the books of account? And for the same asset, what is the corresponding tax base or what will be the amount that should be reflected if we prepared financials for tax purpose. Now, what do I mean by that? Simply put, if I just, you know, give you first year's example, cost of PPE, 1,20,000, less depreciation, 
How much is the depreciation? 40,000. Carrying amount in books is 120 minus 40, 80,000. Okay, this is your carrying amount in the books or asset value in the books. Now, if I prepare same thing for tax, if I assume for a moment I prepare a balance sheet for tax, then for balance sheet of tax, what we will do is we will say cost of PPE is 120,000. There is no change in that. But the depreciation is not 40,000, but the depreciation is 60,000. Then what is the carrying amount for tax? The carrying amount for tax is 60,000. So the tax base is 60,000. The carrying amount in the books is 60, 000, is 80,000. Now, is there a difference? Yes, there is a difference. What is the difference? 80 minus 60. There is a difference. Meaning to say, the tax base is lesser. The tax base is lesser than the asset in the books. The tax base is lesser than the asset in the books. Which also means that in the future, we will get less reduction. In the future, we will get less deduction and because of that, we will have to pay higher tax. So, you will have to recognize the liability today. So, what is the difference 20? Tax rate 25 percent, deferred tax liability is 20,000 multiplied by 25 percent that comes to 5,000. Is it the same thing we recognize under the income approach? Yes. Now, come to year 2. Cost of PPE or I will say carrying amount okay now what is the carrying amount 80000 carrying amount is 80000 how much is the depreciation is again 40000 what is the carrying amount in books now 40000 for tax what is the carrying amount carrying amount is this 60000 what is the depreciation 60000 then what is the carrying amount for tax base carrying amount for tax base is zero now what is the difference? The difference is 40,000. What is the difference? The difference is 40,000. Now, on this 40,000, if I apply a 25% rate, I get a deferred tax liability of 10,000. Now, out of this 10,000, I have already recognized 5,000 in the last year, 5,000 I will recognize in the current year. So, this is what is the meaning of carrying amount in the books or asset value in the books and the tax base. Now, come to year 3. Year 3, 80, year 3 this is 40,000. Depreciation, I will charge 40,000. Carrying amount is 0. Come to tax. Tax anyways, it is 0. Now, is there any difference? There is no difference. What is the tax rate? 25 percent. What should be the liability? 0. So, what happens? This 10,000 of deferred tax liability, the balance at the end of year 2 will be reversed in year 3. It is much simpler approach than using the income approach, right? So, this is the approach that we will follow when we calculate deferred tax asset or liability. So, I have introduced you to the concept of tax base of an asset and the carrying amount in the books. The difference between these two will result in a is, will result in a difference and because of this difference, there could be a deferred tax asset or a deferred tax liability, right? So, having understood this, let us now quickly run through the definitions for the concept that we have understood. Uh, there is a lot more for us to understand in terms of what is this tax base because this is the first time we are getting introduced to this concept. Now, let us have a look at the definitions of the concepts that we have understood in the previous example. The first one is the accounting profit. Very simple. The profit or loss before deducting tax expense as per our accounts is accounting profit. Okay. Then, taxable profit or tax loss. Now, what is this taxable profit or tax loss? This is basically the profit or loss for a period determined in accordance with the rules established by the taxation authorities upon which income taxes are payable or recoverable. To put it simply, the taxable profit or the taxable loss computed as per the provisions of income tax based on which either we will pay tax or recover tax. Now, you know, what is this recovery of tax? In some countries, there is a concept that if there is a loss in the current year and if you have paid tax in the previous period, then you can recover the tax from the government. You will get a refund of tax. Okay. Not like in India where if you have loss in the current period, you can carry it forward to the subsequent periods. But in countries like US, there is a concept of carry back. So, say for example, you have loss in the current period, you have profits in the previous period based on which you have paid the taxes. So, based on the current year loss and you know of course to some restrict and of course based on certain restrictions, 
you can ask for a refund so that so basically the taxable profit or tax loss based on which income taxes are payable or recoverable for us it will be income tax payable or it would be zero obviously there could be refund of tds or advanced taxes okay that is a different thing that is not a recovery there is not a recovery of tax okay so that is just a refund of advanced tax already paid so for us it is more about tax payable which will be dependent on the taxable profit if there is a taxable loss no tax is payable then Coming to the next aspect that is tax expense or tax income. We will focus on what is tax expense. If it is a negative number, it will be an income. Now, what is this tax expense? Now, in the previous example, we understood about amount of tax to be paid based on the taxable income, right? So, the tax that you have to pay in the current year based on the taxable income is called current tax. So, basically, when you file your income tax return, what is the amount of tax that is payable, which is computed based on the taxable income, that is what is called current tax. Then we also understood a concept called deferred tax. Now, tax expense is nothing but current tax plus deferred tax. So, current tax, whatever is the current tax expense plus whatever is the deferred tax expense, that will give you the total tax expense. Now, this can be a tax income also. Tax income is equal to current tax income plus deferred tax income or it could be a case where there is a current tax expense of let us say 10,000 and there is a deferred tax asset or a benefit of 2,000. So, the tax expense will be 10,000 minus 2,000, 8,000. Say there is a current tax expense of 10,000, there is a deferred tax liability of 2,000, then the total tax expense will be 10,000 plus 2,000, 12,000. So, tax expense is equal to current tax plus defer tax okay so what is tax expense tax expense is the aggregate amount included in the determination of profit and loss for the period in respect of current tax and defer tax simply put total tax tax expense is equal to current tax plus defer tax now this defer tax if it is a defer tax liability that you have created then you will increase the expense if it is a defer tax asset a kind of a benefit you will reduce the expense as we do more as we do problems you'll have a better grip on this then what is current tax? Current tax is the amount of income tax payable or recoverable in respect of the taxable profit or tax loss for a period. So, as I told you in India, we don't have this concept of recovery of tax, but you know, in some countries, there is a concept of recovery of tax as well if you have a tax loss and you have paid tax in the previous period. So, based on that, current tax is the amount of tax which is payable or recoverable based on tax profit or tax loss. Okay. Then, coming to Deferred tax liabilities. What are these deferred tax liabilities? These deferred tax liabilities, they arise when you pay less tax now, but you have to pay a higher tax in the future. We paid less current tax, but a higher tax in the future, which has resulted in a deferred tax liability. This is one underlying concept that you have to remember and understand that if today you are paying less tax and in the future you have to pay a higher tax because of the events and transactions in the current year, then the higher tax that you will pay in the future will be a deferred tax liability. So, a deferred tax liability are the amount of income taxes payable in future periods in respect of taxable temporary differences. We have broadly understood the meaning of these differences, we will understand about that in more detail. So, because of a difference, if you have to pay a higher tax in the future, that will result in a deferred tax liability. Exactly ulta. A defer tax asset are the amounts of income taxes recoverable in the future periods. That is basically higher tax paid now and a less tax that will be paid in the future because of a deductible temporary difference, carry forward of unused tax losses and carry forward of unused tax credits. Okay. Now, each of these items we will understand in more detail when we specifically talk about defer tax asset. But the fundamental concept that you have to remember is if you pay less tax today, if you pay more tax in the future, it is a deferred tax liability. If you pay more tax today you will, and you pay less tax in the future, that will be a deferred tax asset. Okay. Then, temporary differences are differences between the carrying amount of an asset or liability in the balance sheet and its tax base. So, as I told you, we will be following the balance sheet approach. We will not be following the income approach in India S12. Now, as far as balance sheet approach is concerned, there could be a difference between carrying amount of the asset in the books and the tax base. We saw the example earlier where we figured out that there is a difference in the carrying amount of the asset in the books and in the and for the purpose of tax. So, 
here we had seen that carrying amount in the books is 80,000. Carrying amount for the purpose of tax or the tax base is 60,000. This difference of 20,000 is called a temporary difference. Okay. Now, one thing that you have to keep in mind is this 20,000 of difference has indirectly arisen because of difference in depreciation. And when we follow the balance sheet approach, we are looking at the cumulative impact over a period of time. Okay, So we are looking at the cumulative impact of all the differences in depreciation as on a particular date. Instead of as per the income approach where we compare the depreciation on year to year basis, under the balance sheet approach, we are looking at the cumulative impact of the differences as on a particular date. right? So, so the temporary differences are differences between the carrying amount of an asset or liability in the balance sheet and its tax base. Temporary differences may be taxable temporary differences and deductible temporary differences. Now, what is the meaning of this taxable temporary difference and deductible temporary difference? Now, when we talk about taxable temporary differences, basically these are the differences that will result in taxable amounts in the future and deductible temporary differences will actually result in deductible amounts in the future. Now, what do I mean by that? See, the difference of 20,000 here, this is a taxable temporary difference because in the future it will result in taxable amounts. Okay, So, that is why this 20,000 or this 40,000 of difference is a taxable temporary difference and the reason for that is you have already claimed the depreciation in year 1 and year 2. Okay. Now, whatever is the difference left 40,000 for that you are not getting any deduction in the future because the tax base is 0. So, whatever is there in the books that you may write off in the books but for that you will not get any deductions in the future and hence it is a taxable temporary difference. Why is it taxable? Because here you have already got the excess deduction. So, that will result in a taxable temporary difference in the future. If it was the reverse case, that is, if say for example, depreciation in books was 60-60 and here it was 40-40, then it would have been a deductible temporary difference because you would have got a deduction of depreciation in the future. Because you would have got a deduction of this amount in the future, then it would have been, it would have been a deductible temporary difference. So, Taxable temporary difference are temporary differences that will result in taxable amounts in determining taxable profit of future period. So basically, whatever is the difference, if that results in taxable amounts in the future, that is to say, for example, in the books, the carrying amount is 40,000. If for tax base, it is zero, talking about our property, plant and equipment. This 40,000 and zero results in a difference of 40,000. And in the subsequent period, will you get a deduction of this 40,000? You will not get any deduction. This will increase your taxable income. This will become a taxable amount. The difference will be actually taxed in the future. So, it is a taxable temporary difference. If it was the reverse case, if the books, if the carrying amount in the books was 0, the tax base was 40,000. In the future, you will get 40,000 of depreciation deduction. So, it is a deductible temporary difference. So, Deductible temporary difference are temporary differences that will result in amounts that are deductible in determining taxable profit of future periods. So, whenever you, so if you receive deduction, it is a deductible temporary difference and it can be for both an asset or a liability. Similarly, for taxable, it can be for both an asset and a liability. Now that we have understood the various concepts under India S12, let us start with current tax. What is current tax? Current tax is the tax which is payable in the current year calculated as per income tax rules. Now, a few things that you have to keep in mind about current tax is, say for example, we are in year 1. Okay, Forget assessment year, previous year and all of that, we are in year 1. For year 1, you will calculate what is the taxable profit and on the basis of the taxable profit, after adjusting any broad forward losses and all of that, you will see, you will calculate what is the amount of tax that is payable and in that year you will make a provision for that amount of tax that is payable. So, whatever is payable as per the calculations that you have done for year 1 will be the current tax for that year and that will be recognized as a liability. So, the accounting entry will be income tax expense current debit to income tax payable which is a liability right that is what you will do now a lot of time what happens is you need to pay advance tax now whenever you pay advance tax the entry will be advance tax for that particular year debit to cash or bank right now what the standard says is if 
the current tax for the particular year is unpaid or even for the prior period is unpaid, you have to show it as a current liability. So say for example, for year 1, the total current tax comes to 1 lakh. We have paid advance tax of 60,000. So 40,000 will be shown as a current liability. Or say for example, even for prior period, there is some more amount which is not yet paid. Say for example, for the current year, the current tax is 1 lakh, which we have not paid at all, which will be a current liability. And for the previous period also, there is 20,000 which is not yet paid. So even that will be a current liability. So you will show 1 lakh 20,000 as current liability. Now, say for a moment, you have paid advance taxes of 50,000, but the current tax expense comes to only 20,000. Then 50,000 minus 20,000, the difference, you will show it as current asset. So, so depending on whether you have tax payable for the current period and previous period, you will show it as a current liability. If it is a tax recoverable because you have paid excess tax, that you will show it as a current asset. And as I told you, in some countries, you can ask for refund of taxes paid earlier because of losses in the current year. So say for example, in year 1, you have you had income of 1 lakh on which you have paid 25% of tax that is 25,000. In year 2, there is a loss of 50,000. There is a loss of 50,000 and the income tax rules provide that. Because of this loss in the current period, you can actually carry back this loss to the previous period and claim a refund. So, how much is the loss in the current period? 50,000. What is 25% of 50,000? 12,500. This 12,500 can be asked as a refund from the government. Then in that case, what the standard says is, you have to recognize this 12,500 as a current asset. And what will be the accounting entry? income tax receivable or income tax refund receivable 12,500 to income tax benefit or maybe current tax income because you are recovering the tax which is already paid right so you will credit the income tax expense account so there could be a case where you can carry back a current year loss and you can you can get a refund that refund which is receivable will be recognized as an asset so that is what is the principle around current tax a current tax can be a current liability or a current asset depending on whether it is payable or recoverable. If amount is still payable, it's a current tax liability. It's a current liability. If amount is recoverable, then it is a current asset, right? It's a very simple concept. So we have seen that there can be a current tax liability or a current tax asset. Now consider one scenario that for year one, there is a current tax liability. For year two, there is a current tax asset and we are preparing financial statements for year two. Can we offset this current tax liability and current tax asset? Now that depends on whether the entity has the right to offset them and whether the entity has intention to do so. So basically, if the entity has a right to offset and the entity wants to offset those, then they can offset each, then they can offset this liability and asset and present it as a single amount. Otherwise, they'll have to present a liability separately and an asset separately. Now, if you look at the Indian taxation system, normally the, uh, the tax payable are settled on assessment year to assessment year basis. Okay, Generally, you will not see that you know the entity has a right to say that okay, I have already paid tax in the past, so I will not pay tax now and all of that. That generally does not happen. So say for example, if for year 1, there is a tax asset or current tax asset. For year 2, there is a current tax liability. The entity cannot say that I will not settle this liability or I will not pay tax for this liability because there is a refund from the previous period. Because Assessment also takes you know quite some amount of time. So there is no right with the entity to offset these amounts. So generally on an assessment year to assessment year basis, they will present it as separate line items. Okay, so when you are preparing financial statements for year two, you will present the asset separately and the liability separately. Now coming to consolidated financial statements, it may be possible that you have current tax asset and current tax liability for the same assessment year. Can you offset both of these? You may not be able to offset both of these because they may be pertaining to different entities within the group and you cannot say that okay one of my subsidiary has paid excess tax the other subsidiary has a liability so i'll offset all of that that will not happen right so because the entity does not have a right to offset the amounts the entity will present them as separate line items if the entity has a right to offset these amounts and the entity has an intention to do so then obviously you can offset them and present them as a single line item now, how do we measure a current tax asset or a current tax liability? A very simple concept. 
based on the rates based on the tax rates that have been enacted or substantially enacted now as far as current taxations are concerned generally these are based on the years which have already passed by years which have already been completed and hence you will be using the enacted tax rate very rarely you will be using substantially enacted tax rate unless the government says that we are retrospectively reducing the tax rates right so what you will do you will take the tax rate for the relevant year and you will see what is the amount that is expected to be paid and accordingly you will determine the current tax liability as far as current tax asset is concerned you will again take the you know respective rate and compute and see how much is the amount that is recoverable based on that you will measure the current tax asset and current tax liability now sometimes while recognizing current tax asset or current tax liability the entity may encounter certain uncertain tax provisions or tax treatments now what do you mean by uncertain tax treatments there are a lot of provisions sections provisos rules in income tax act which are ambiguous or which are not very clear in fact in one of our clients case the client was claiming deductions under section 80 series which was based on basically construction of residential property which does not exceed a specified built up area assume for a moment the specified built up area is 1000 square feet so the built up area of each residential unit should not exceed 1000 square feet now what is built up area is not clearly defined in the act each one has his or her own interpretations so the builder made his own interpretations and built the residential units thinking that it is within the prescribed limit now at the time of assessment the assessing officer added the porch area also as a part of built up area now if you add the porch area as a part of built up area it exceeds the threshold prescribed under the act now the builder contends that this post area cannot be considered as a part of built up area now there is a conflict here the the sse has taken one stand the department has taken another stand now whenever there are these uncertain tax provisions what should be done that is the key question should the entity say that now you know this is going into dispute and you know we'll have to make a provision for the liability should they do that or should they do that no no we'll fight this case and we will win this case we are confident that we will win this case and accordingly not provide for any liability what the standard says is in such kind of situations when there are uncertain tax provisions the entity has to make a liability of the amount that it expects to pay to the department so if let us say the entity believes that there is a 50% chance that they have to pay the amount then to the extent of that 50% they have to create a liability if the entity believes that no no we are absolutely sure that we will not have to pay any amount of tax then no need to make any provision okay you will understand when you learn direct taxation the amount of case laws the amount of you know or judgments that you have to go through and you will see the judgment made by one level of judiciary being reversed at another level of judiciary you will see conflicting decisions for same facts and circumstances in such cases what the standard says is if there are any uncertain tax provisions uncertain tax treatments then consider determine the amount that the entity expects to pay and accordingly make a liability similarly for recovery of amounts determine what is the amount that the entity expects to recover and accordingly create a tax asset so we have understood about current taxes let us now move on to the next aspect which is deferred taxation and let me tell you deferred tax is an area which is more complex and which is dealt in detailed by the standard whether you look at as 22 or whether you look at india as 12 more emphasis and more discussion is around deferred taxation and that is what is more complex now before i jump into the discussion around deferred taxation let us quickly summarize and have a broad overview of what we will be understanding what are the logics that we need to understand and how do we ensure that we are not confused in the examination or in the real life now if you remember the example that we took in the previous modules we said that depreciation as per books is different from the depreciation as per tax is concerned and because of this difference the accounting profit was different from the taxable profit and we saw that if we just provide for current taxation the net profit after tax would not show a clear picture and this difference of depreciation was something which would which would originate in one period and which would subsequently reverse in another period so in the earlier period you had higher deduction for tax purpose which resulted in lower current tax and when the and subsequently in the third year we had no deduction for tax purpose and there was a higher tax which was payable so what the standard says is what is the basis is 
you have to match the income that you are reporting for accounting purpose with the tax expense. This standard is around matching concept. So, if you have taken some amount of depreciation for accounting purpose and the depreciation as per tax is different, then the tax impact of this difference should be considered for deferred taxation. And as I told you, there can be an income approach to compute and there can be a balance sheet approach to compute. We will be focusing on the balance sheet approach. Now, the difference in taxation that is paying less in the current period but paying higher in the subsequent period that creates something called a deferred tax liability. So the underlying logic is if you are paying less tax today in the form of current tax and you have a liability to pay a higher tax in the future then there is a deferred tax liability. Why? Because there is a liability coming up in the future. Similarly, if you are paying higher tax today as current tax and in the future period you will be paying lesser taxes then that would result in deferred tax asset. Why an asset? Because the extra tax you are paying in the current period is giving you some form of benefit by way of reduced taxes in the future period. Okay, So that is what results in deferred tax asset or a deferred tax liability. And of course, if you have you know losses to be carried forward, even that would result in deferred tax asset. When we come to the discussion, we will understand about that. Now that we have understood the broad aspect of deferred taxation, why it arises and why it is important to account for deferred tax, what we need to understand is when do we recognize a deferred tax, how do we measure this deferred tax and how do we present this measure tax. Okay, These three pillars is what we need to understand as a part of India's 12. And now onwards, we will only be talking about balance sheet approach. Time and again, I will take you back to the income approach for you to understand why that you know deferred tax has arisen. But as far as computation is concerned, we will follow the balance sheet approach only. Now, what is this balance sheet approach? We took an example of a you know fixed asset or a property, plant, and equipment having different base or different value as for the books of accounts and a different carrying amount as far as the tax is concerned. So, the balance sheet value or the value of an asset computed for the tax purpose is called the tax base and the value of that asset or the carrying amount of that asset as per the books of account is considered as carrying amount. So, we will be talking about things like carrying amount of asset or carrying amount of liability and tax base of that asset and tax base of the liability. Okay. First, we will take some examples. We will understand what is the tax base, what is the accounting base and then we will go on to the definition. Let's now understand the meaning of tax base of an asset. We have understood the broader concept. We need to break down the definition as given in the standard. And as we take more examples, as we practice more and more sums, will be it will be very easy for us to determine what is the tax base and what does it mean. Now, say for example, there is a machine which was purchased at say rupees 1000. Okay. And the rate of depreciation for simplicity's sake, let us assume that the rate of depreciation that is allowed for tax purpose is 30% on a return down value method. Okay. So, and just assume that this is the only machine in the block and let us not get into act and let us not get into actual income tax rules. So, 1000 is the cost. Let us say at the beginning of year one, you purchased it at 1000. Then in the first year, you charged depreciation of 30% that is 300. So, what is the return down value at the end of the first year for tax purpose? 1000 minus 300, 700 is the return down value. Now, in the next year, on this 700, you will get a 30% depreciation deduction. So, that is 1000, that is 700 multiplied by 30%, 210 rupees. So, 700 minus 210, you get 490. So, that is the WDV at the end of year 2. Now, this 490 that we have arrived at, what is the meaning of this or what is the meaning of this written down value for tax purpose? It means that in the future, you will get deductions to the extent of 490, maybe by way of depreciation and maybe when you sell off this particular asset, at that point of time, you will get this deduction. That is what is the meaning of a tax base of an asset. So now, say this 490, if you keep on using this machine forever, every year you will get 30% deduction. So this 490 will be depreciated over that period of time. And this 490 in the form of depreciation will be deducted 
from the income that the business earns right so, so let's say in the next year there is a income of 1000 rupees in after considering all the expenses before depreciation from that 1000 rupees you will get depreciation deduction at 30 percent of this 490 like this in the future whenever there is income you will get a benefit of this you know depreciation you will be able to deduct it against the income right that is what is the tax base of an asset so the tax base of an asset is nothing but the deduction that you will be entitled to in the future period now say for a moment just for argument's sake in the third year you did not use this machine and on the first day of the third year you sold off this machine and you sold off this machine for say 500 you sold off this machine for 500 so you get an amount of 500 now against this 500 this 490 can be deducted because that is the return on value of this machine okay again i am not getting into actual taxation principles where you have this block of asset and till the time all the assets are disposed of you will not get the you know a benefit of the balancing charge or you will not get the benefit of the balancing charge or terminal depreciation i am keeping all of that aside simply assume that this machine was sold for 500 ignore you know indexation everything ignore for now this 500 Against this 500, I get a deduction of 490. So, my taxable capital gain in this example will be only 10. So, what am I getting out of an asset? As far as an asset is concerned, I am getting a benefit of deduction either in the way of depreciation or by the way uh, or at the time when I sell off that particular asset, I am getting a deduction. So, that is as far as a tax base of something like a property plant and equipment is concerned. Let us take another example. Now, let us consider a trade receivable. Now, what is a trade receivable? When you sell goods on credit, you know, there is something called a trade receivable, which is nothing but the debtors outstanding. So, say for example, in the current period, the entity sold 10,000 worth of goods on credit. What is the trade receivable amount? 10,000 rupees. In the balance sheet, you will show accounts receivable or trade receivable at 10,000. Now, for the tax purpose, the same asset, how will you represent that? See, for the tax purpose also, you would have recognized this income for tax purpose. You would have said that, okay, this is my income for tax purpose. You would, have, you would have already recognized that as sales and that amount is still outstanding. So, even for tax purpose, the trade receivable amount is 10,000, right? So, you can see here that the tax base of an account receivable, which is already recognized in books as well as for the purpose of taxation, it is 10,000. And it means that there is no difference between the accounting balance and the tax base of the same thing, right? So, when there is an account receivable, one side you have 10,000 in the books, for the tax purpose also the tax base is 10,000, right? And there is no difference between these two. Now, consider another scenario where you have interest receivable, you have interest receivable and assume for a moment that for taxation purpose, interest is taxed on receipt basis. I am just making an assumption, interest is taxed on a receipt basis, okay? Now, in the books, you will account for the interest on accrual basis, right? As and when the interest accrues, you will account for it. So, assume for a moment, 10,000 is interest accrued for the year. What will, what will you do in the books? You will say interest receivable debit and you will credit interest income. So, in the books of account, you have already shown 10,000 of interest income. But for the tax purpose, what is the interest income? Interest income is zero. There is nothing that you have accounted as income for tax purpose. Now, because interest income is zero, will you again have interest receivable? You will not again have interest receivable. So, interest receivable will also be zero. Now, here if you see, there is a difference. In the books of accounts, the asset is at 10,000. In for the tax purpose, the tax base of that particular asset is zero. There is a difference of 10,000. Now, let us understand what will be the impact of this difference of 10,000. Now, if you see the taxation of this interest will happen when you actually receive the interest. So, in the current period, is there any current tax on this interest income? There is no current tax. But will you have a tax in the future for this? Yes, you will have a tax on this in the future. So, current year you are paying less tax. In the future, you will pay a higher tax. So, there will be a defer tax liability. So, one thing now you can start remembering or noting down is that if the carrying amount of the asset is greater than the tax base, I am repeating, if the carrying amount of the asset is greater than the tax base, this results in deferred tax liability. Now, apply the same principle on the depreciation example that I gave you. In the depreciation example, if you see, that the depreciation for tax was higher, so the tax base was lower. 
carrying amount was higher in the books so because the carrying amount is higher and the tax base of the asset is lower there was a deferred tax liability which was created okay so this is how we compute a tax base now before i take more examples i will take you through the definition of tax base of an asset as given in the standard and then we'll understand few more examples so the tax base of an asset is the amount that will be deductible for tax purposes against any taxable economic benefits that will flow to an entity when it recovers the carrying amount of the asset. So, the tax base of an asset is what? It is the amount that will be deductible for tax purpose. It is, it is the amount that will be deductible for tax purpose against any economic benefits that will flow to the entity in the future. That is what that is what is the tax base of an asset. So, if you look at the tax base of a property plant and equipment for tax purpose, then the amount of property plant and equipment that you will be able to deduct against any economic benefits in the future. And the standard also says that if those economic benefits will not be taxable, the tax base of the asset is equal to its carrying amount. Now, the second part, we can apply it to an account receivable balance. Now, what does the definition say? If those economic benefits will not be taxable, the tax base of the asset is equal to its carrying amount. Now, the accounts receivable, what you show, when you receive the amounts from accounts receivable in the future, will it be taxed? It will not be taxed. So, because it is not being taxed, the, carry, the tax base of the account receivable is equal to the carrying amount. That is one another logic of understanding what is a tax base. One logic is you have already accounted for in the books as income. So, you are showing an account receivable balance. For tax also, you have shown it as an income already. So, there is an account receivable balance. Hence, the carrying amount and the tax base, both of them are equal. But if you look at the interest receivable example, now, interest receivable has a carrying amount of 10,000. Will that be taxed when you receive it in the future? Yes, it will be taxed when you receive it in the future. So, there the carrying amount of interest receivable is not 10,000 but it is zero because you have not yet offered it as an income. For tax purpose, there is no asset as on date, right? Now, let us take another example. Let us say there is an advance given by the entity to let us say its employees or to you know some other party. Now, this advance is recoverable in the future. Now, in the books, what will you say? You will say that there are advances under assets and let us say the amount is 20,000. Now, as far as the taxation of this is concerned, when you recover the advances of 20,000, will there be any tax impact? Will you be taxing this advance which is recovered in the future? You will not be taxing it, right? So, because the economic benefits in the way of recovery of advances is not taxable, the tax base is equal to carrying amount that is 20,000 in the books and 20,000 for the purpose of taxation as well. Now, consider another example. Say, there is an entity which has which will receive dividends and this dividends is receivable and you have accounted for it as income in the books. So, in the books, there is dividend income and dividend receivable. You have not yet received. Now, for the tax purpose, assume for a moment that these dividends are exempted. These dividends are exempted. Now, if the dividends are exempted and anyways, anyways in the current period, you will not be, you know, taxing them. Even in the future period, you will not be taxing them. So, for this asset called dividend receivable, the future economic benefits will not be taxable and hence the dividend receivable in the books, let us say it is 15,000. The, for the tax also, the tax base will be 15,000. There is no difference. Now, for this, if you apply the income approach, what would you have told? You would have said that this dividend is never going to be taxed. So, this is a permanent difference and hence there is no deferred tax impact. Now, in this analysis of balance sheet approach, we will say, 15,000 of dividend receivable is the carrying amount, 15,000 is the tax base, the difference is zero and hence there is no deferred tax impact. Now, another way to look at this is that dividend receivable will never be taxed, dividend receivable will never be taxed in the future and we have not yet recognized or we will not be recognizing this as income for the purpose of tax. So, in the tax, there will be no entry at all. So, so, for the tax purpose, the tax base itself will be zero. Okay, this is an this is an alternative analysis. For the books, you will say dividend receivable 15,000. For the tax, you will say dividend receivable zero because you will never take this amount into your tax return. Now, what is the difference? Difference is 15,000. Now, on this difference of 15,000, you will apply the principle that the dividend is not taxable and hence 
the tax rate itself is zero. So 15,000 multiplied by zero will be zero and hence there will not be any deferred tax impact. Okay. Now as you do problems, as you look at problems, you'll be able to better appreciate the underlying logic that we have discussed so far. Let's take another example. Say we have inventory. Inventory in the books is 20,000 and the same value is acceptable for tax purpose. Now, what does this 20,000 of inventory signify? In the future, when you sell, let us say you sell goods for, goods for 25,000, these all goods, you will get a deduction of 20,000, right? So, this deduction is available against future economic benefits that the entity receives. So, for the tax purpose, you will say that, okay, this 20,000 worth of asset can be deducted in the future against economic benefits and hence, the carrying amount of the asset in the books is 20,000 and the tax base is 20,000. Take another example, say we have debtors or, or accounts receivable and the accounts receivable is say at 50,000 and against this account receivable, we have made a 10% provision for bad debts. Now, what will you do with this 10% provision for bad debts in the books? You will treat it as an expense, right? So, let us say 50,000 of debtors and 10% provision for bad debts is 5,000. The tax, the carrying amount of accounts receivable or the debtors is 45,000. Now, Think of it, what should be the tax base? Now, as far as the taxation is concerned, we do not get any deduction for provision for bad debts. We get deductions only for actual bad debts. We get deductions only for actual bad debts. So, what should be the tax base of this account receivable? See, as far as the taxation is concerned, the debtors balance is 50,000. There is no deduction for provision for bad debts and hence the tax base is 50,000 in total. Now, in the future, in the future, let us say you write off 5,000 of bad debts. Then, in the future, you will get a deduction of 5,000. You will get a deduction of 5,000 and balance 45,000 that you recover from the debtors that will not have any tax consequence. So, the debtor balance of 45,000 in the books will be shown as a tax base of 50,000. And what is the breakup of this 50,000? The breakup of this 50,000, assuming that 5,000 is written off as bad debt, 5,000 will be allowed as a deduction. So, 5,000 is that component and 45,000 will not be taxed. So, that is, a, that is the tax base of that asset. So, taxation for taxation purpose, you will have tax base of 50,000 only because you will not get deductions of provision for bad debt. Now, this difference of 5,000 will create something called a deferred tax, right? Now, what will it create? Will it create a deferred tax asset or a deferred tax liability? See, in the books, the carrying amount is less. For tax, for tax, the tax base is higher. So, if the tax base of an asset is higher, it will create a deferred tax asset. Okay, so that is one thing you have to keep in mind. And the other way to look at this is, in the books, you have taken an expense of 5000 in the current period. For tax, the expense is not allowed. So, you will be paying higher tax now. But in the future, whenever you write it off as a bad debt, you will be able to reduce your tax then and hence there is a deferred tax asset which is created. So, there is a good amount of linkage between the income approach and the balance sheet approach. Let's take one more example and this time preliminary expenses. Say for example, the preliminary expenses for formation of a company and all of that put together is 1 lakh rupees. Now, in the books of account, what will you do with this 1 lakh? This 1 lakh has to be expensed off. You cannot capitalize it as asset because in days 38 does not allow you to capitalize these preliminary expenses. So, entire 1 lakh is written off. It is charged off to the PNL. So, what is the carrying amount of preliminary expenses in the books? It is zero because everything has been expensed off. Now, when we come to taxation, what the taxation rules say is this preliminary expenses, you cannot claim it in entirety in the first year. You have to claim it in five equal installments. So, how much will be allowed in the first year? In the first year, you will be allowed only 20,000 as deduction. So, then what about balance 80,000? 20,000 each over the next four years is what you will claim as deduction. So, for the purpose of taxation, total pre preliminary expense is 1 lakh. Out of that, you have claimed a deduction of 20,000. So, this balance 80,000 is like an asset for the tax purpose or this is the tax base of an asset for the purpose of income tax. Okay. Now, there is an 80,000 of tax base and you have carrying amount as zero, there is a difference. Now, this difference, if you see the carrying amount being zero and tax base as 80,000, the tax base of an asset is higher, which will result in a deferred tax asset. So, why deferred tax asset? Because you are paying higher taxes now and you will be paying lesser taxes in the future.
So let's now understand the meaning of a tax base of a liability. So the tax base of a liability is its carrying amount that is amount as per books less any amount that will be deductible for tax purpose in respect of that liability in future period. Okay. So basically when you come when you call when you have to compute the tax base of a liability you have to take the carrying amount less any amount that will be deductible in the future in respect of that particular liability. Now, say for example, the entity has provided for bonus to employees, okay, and the bonus to employee is let us say 1 lakh rupees. Now, this bonus to employee is not yet paid, so you will say, you know, employee benefit expense 1 lakh to bonus payable 1 lakh, okay. For the books of account, you have already recognized the expense. But tell me one thing, when will this bonus be allowed as deduction? The bonus will be allowed as deduction when you actually pay the bonus okay now assume for a moment we don't have any cutoff related to you know filing of return and all of that simple for simplicity purpose let us assume that the bonus will be allowed as deduction in the year in which it is paid so let us say we are in year one in year one the bonus is not yet paid the bonus is paid in year two so when will you get the deduction for tax purpose you will get the deduction in year two only okay now coming to the carrying amount as far as the books is concerned in the books you will say there is a current liability called bonus payable 1 lakh but as far as the taxation is concerned have you taken the deduction of this you have not yet taken the deduction of this okay then because you have not yet taken the deduction of this there will be no there will not be any entry called expense on account of bonus and accordingly there will not be any tax base of the liability so the tax base of this liability that is bonus payable will be zero that is one way to understand the other way to understand when we just looked at the definition is that the tax base of a liability is the carrying amount which is 1 lakh less any amount that will be allowed as deduction in the future. Now out of this 1 lakh, how much will be allowed as deduction in the future? Entire 1 lakh will be allowed as deduction. So 1 lakh minus 1 lakh, the net amount or the net tax base of this liability is 0, right? So the carrying amount is 1 lakh, this is a liability and the tax base is 0. Now. Now here the carrying amount is 1 lakh, the tax base is 0. Now because the tax base of the liability is less, because it is less, you will recognize a deferred tax asset. See if the tax base of the asset is higher, then you will recognize as an asset and if the tax base of the liability is lower, then you will recognize a deferred tax asset. The other way to understand this is, in the books we have recognized the expense but we did not get the deduction, so we paid higher taxes now. In the future, we will pay lower taxes and hence there is a deferred tax asset. Now, say for example, there is a liability which is an income received in advance. So, say for example, there is a rental income which is received in advance. And in the books of accounts, you will not recognize the rental income till the time the rent actually accrues. Okay, But when it comes for tax purpose, assume for a moment that any rent which is received in advance is also taxable. So basically, I am making a provision which says that rent will be taxed on receipt basis. Now, if you compare this scenario, in the books of account, when you receive advance rate, in the books of account, when you receive advance rent, say for example, advance rent of 50,000 is received for the next period. What will you show in the books? You will credit it to a liability account and you will show it as a liability called income received in advance or maybe revenue received in advance, whatever the nomenclature you use. But for the tax purpose in the same year, what will you do is you will account for this or you will show this as an income. So entire rent that is received in advance will be shown as income for the purpose of tax. Now when you have showed it as income, when you have credited that amount as income in the taxation books, then in that case, will there be any liability shown in the tax book? There will not be any liability shown. In the books, you have a liability. For tax purpose, there is no liability because the income is not received in advance for tax purpose. For tax purpose, the income is taxable when it is received. So just to make a hypothetical entry, for the purpose of tax, you will say bank account debit to rental income. There is no liability credited. But for the books, you will say bank account debit to income received in advance. Now, if you see here, in the books of account, the carrying amount is the rent received in advance, which is 50,000. But for the purpose of tax, the carrying amount is nil. So the standard says that whenever there is an income received in advance or revenue received in advance, then the tax base is equal to the carrying amount of the item. So in our case, the carrying amount is 50,000 less any amount that will not be taxable in the future when received. So what the standard says is 
the tax base of a liability when an income is received in advance or revenue is received in advance is equal to the carrying amount which in our case is 50,000 less amount that will not be taxable in the future. So in the future in the books let us say in year 2 you transfer this liability account to income account you basically recognize it as an income in that year will you tax any income on account of rent you will not do that because in year 1 itself you have taxed the entire amount. So 50,000 the carrying amount less the amount that will not be taxed in the future 50,000 the tax base is nil and what is the difference the difference is 50,000 carrying amount of 50,000 and tax base of nil there is a difference of 50,000 now here tax base of a liability is it lower or, a, or higher it is lower because the tax base of liability is lower there will be a deferred tax asset okay the other way to understand it is we have already paid tax today income will be recognized in the future in the future taxes will be lesser because that income will not be taxed again so there is a deferred tax asset let us take another example say there is an expense payable advertisement expense payable what is the entry in the books advertisement expense debit to advertisement expense payable or to a creditor so in the books there is a carrying amount of liability towards expense payable say for example 10,000 come to the taxation part in the tax will you allow this as an expense yes you will allow this as an expense so this expense is deducted this expense is deducted to determine the taxable income but have we actually paid it we have not yet paid it so in this books also you will say advertisement expense to advertisement expense payable so the tax base of the liability is equal to the carrying amount now why is the tax base of the liability equal to the liability in the books in case of that advertisement expense because the tax base of the liability is equal to the carrying amount of liability less any amount that will be allowed as a deduction in the future. Now because you have already claimed the entire deduction nothing will be allowed in the future so the deduction will be zero and hence the carrying amount of liability is equal to the tax base of the liability. Let us take one more example say there are certain penalties which are pay which are payable and that is not allowed as a deduction for the purpose of tax. So say there is a thousand rupees of penalty payable which is not allowed under the income tax act. Now the tax base of this liability will be how much tax base of the liability will be the carrying amount which is 1000 less amount which will be allowed as deduction in the future. Is there any amount which will be allowed as deduction in the future? There is no amount which will be allowed as deduction in the future and hence the carrying amount of the penalty in the books as a liability will be equal to its tax base. The other way to understand that is in the books you have provided for penalty payable as an expense for the tax purpose it will never be an expense there will never be an expense called penalty so you will never never debit a penalty account and you will never have a liability for that so the liability or the tax base is zero and the carrying amount is 1000 what is the difference difference is 1000 but is there any tax impact of this there is no tax impact of this the tax rate is zero for this and hence 1000 multiplied by zero it will still be zero and hence there will not be any deferred taxation so to summarize what is the tax base of an asset Tax base of an asset is the amount that will be deductible against any taxable economic benefits that will flow to the entity when the entity recovers its carrying amount. Now, what is the meaning of entity recovering carrying amount? Basically, let us say you have inventory. You sell the inventory, you realize the amount. You have property, plant and equipment. You use the property, plant and equipment and you recover the carrying amount by using the property, plant and equipment and that is how we charge depreciation, right? So, to simply understand, tax base of an asset is the amount that the entity will be deducting against future taxable economic benefits and if the economic benefits are not taxable then the tax base will be equal to the carrying amount of that asset now coming to the tax base of a liability tax base of a liability is the carrying amount of the liability that is as per the books less any amount that will be deductible in the future from that particular liability or when you settle that particular liability okay so tax base of a liability is what the carrying amount of the liability less any amount that will be deductible in the future and if there is a case that there is an income received in advance in that case the tax base of the liability will be equal to the carrying amount of the liability less any amount that will not be taxable in the future so whatever will not be taxable in the future that you will reduce from the carrying amount of the liability and balance will be the tax base of the liability that is one part the next thing that you need to understand is that because we have carrying amount of asset and liability and tax base of the same asset and liability 
and there could be a difference between these two. So based on the differences, we determine whether there is a deferred tax asset or a deferred tax liability. For you to remember, please remember this thing that if tax base of an asset is higher, if tax base of an asset is higher, this will result in deferred tax asset. So what I'm saying, if the tax base of an asset is greater than the carrying amount of the asset, it will result in deferred tax asset. Now, why does it result in deferred tax asset? Because you will get higher deduction in the tax in the future. Because you are getting higher deduction in the future, you will pay less tax then. And because you are paying less tax in the future, because of the differences between the tax base and the accounting base, you are generating a deferred tax asset. Once you remember this first sentence, that is, if the tax base of an asset is greater than the carrying amount of the asset, so what you have to remember, tax base of an asset is greater. So there is asset. So it will result in deferred tax asset. If you remember this, remaining all will be just reversals of this first principle. Okay. So first, what did we say? If the tax base of an asset is greater than the carrying amount of the asset, then there is a deferred tax asset. Similarly, if the tax base of an asset is less than the carrying amount of an asset, it will be a deferred tax liability. Then if the tax base of a liability is greater than the carrying amount of the liability, what will happen? See, if tax base of an asset is greater, it is a deferred tax asset. So if the tax base of a liability is greater, it will be a deferred tax liability. Then if the tax base of a liability is less than the carrying amount of the liability, it will result in deferred tax asset. This is the overall principle that you need to remember. Even if someone wakes you up at midnight and asks you this question, you must be able to answer. Obviously, there is a logic behind this. We have understood the logic. But it is also important that you remember this principle so that in the exam, you should not be spending too much of time in recalling the logic. So let's take one more example and be absolutely clear about the approach we should be taking in determining deferred tax asset or deferred tax liability and how do we compute the carrying amount and the tax base. We've already seen similar thing again, but again, it would be good to recollect what all we have understood and also have a structured approach to calculate the deferred taxation, right? So assume for a moment that the cost of machine is 1 lakh okay then cost of machine is 1 lakh useful life is 5 years depreciation for tax is 25% on SLM basis tax rate is 30% okay now considering these facts we will calculate the carrying amount as per books we will calculate the tax base, we will check whether there will be a deferred tax asset or a deferred tax liability and we will ultimately compute the deferred taxation impact. Okay, so first one, carrying amount in books. So we are doing 5 years, year 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Okay, so as far as books is concerned cost or opening balance how much is the cost 1 lakh on this 1 lakh what is the depreciation see the useful life is 5 years and we'll assume it's an slm depreciation so depreciation is how much 1 lakh divided by 5 that is 20000 and closing balance or your carrying amount will be how much 1 lakh minus 20000 that is 80000 okay now come to tax as far as tax base is concerned, cost opening balance is again is again 1 lakh. Depreciation, the question says it is at 25%. So 1 lakh multiplied by 25% and it's again 20%, 25% on SLM basis. So every year the depreciation will be 25% on SLM basis, that is 25,000. So carrying amount closing WDV or the tax base is how much 1 lakh minus 25 which is 75,000 now so now here tax base of the asset is it greater than the carrying amount or is it less than the carrying amount if you see 75,000 is the tax base 80,000 is the carrying amount so tax base of the asset is lesser and if the tax base of the asset is lesser we create deferred tax liability so lower create DTL. So DTL at what 30%, 30% of the difference. Okay. So I'll just first write down the difference. Difference is 
difference is 75,000 minus 80,000. So, 5,000 is the difference that is it is lower. So, 30% of 5,000 if you do you get a liability of 1500. This is the DTL liability computed 1500. Now, for the first year this will be the expense and this will also be the liability. Come to second year, opening balance is 80, depreciation is 20, closing balance is 60. Here opening balance is 75, depreciation is 25, closing balance is 50. So, what is the difference? Again here it is lower. So, there will be a DTL. What is the difference? 10,000. What will be the DTL impact? DTL impact will be 10,000 multiplied by 30 percent that will give us 3,000. So, this 3,000 represents the closing balance of deferred tax liability. It is not the DTL ex it is not the deferred tax expense for the period. It is the total value of the deferred tax liability. So, what will be the expense for the period? Opening balance 0, here the opening balance is 1500. So, expense for the period will be this minus this, that is 1500 in the first period and 1500 in the second period. Okay. Now, if you are getting, now if you want to ignore the signs, what you can do is you can do 80 minus 75, then you get 5000 of positive difference and 1500 and 1500. Okay. Then year 3, opening balance 60. Depreciation 20, 40, year 4, 40, 20, 20, year 5, 20, 20, 0. For tax, 50, 25, 25, 25 minus 25, 0, 0, 0, and 0. Okay. Here also it is lower, lower, here it is no difference. Right? Then DTL, DTL, what will be the fifth impact? We will come to it. Difference 15, 20, here difference is 0. 4,500, 6,000, opening balance, you plotted there, the difference will be accounted for as an expense. Now, in the last year, what has happened? The difference has become zero. Means, whatever was the difference that was created in the first four years is now reversed. So, you have created deferred tax liability to the extent of 6,000 here. Now, in the last period, the deferred tax liability balance should be zero. Now, what is the opening balance? Opening balance is 6000. What will be the expense for the period? There will not be any expense for the period because now you are reversing the deferred tax liability. You will debit the deferred tax liability and create a deferred tax benefit. This is a reversal of deferred tax liability created. In the first four years, you recognized expense, 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 expense. Here it will be income. Income meaning deferred tax. Okay. Deferred tax expense, deferred tax expense, and last in the fifth year. And lastly, in the fifth year, you have a deferred tax income. So, we have understood the meaning of carrying amount, which is as far as the books of accounts are concerned. And we have see, understood the meaning of tax base that is for the taxation purpose. The difference between these two is called a temporary difference. Now, you might have a doubt. So, is there something called a permanent difference like we had in accounting standard 22? Now, friends, here we do not have any concept of permanent difference. The impact of permanent difference is automatically captured into the carrying amount or the tax base. How is that so? Let me give you a simple example. What is a permanent difference? Say an expense which will never be allowed for tax purpose. An expense which will never be allowed for tax purpose. Let us say this expense is still payable. So, when the expense is payable, you will debit expenses, credit a liability. Now, in the books, you have a carrying amount of liability, say 1000 rupees. What is the tax base of this 1000 rupees? If you go back to the definition of tax base, it says tax base of a liability is the carrying amount of liability, which is 1000 less any amount that will be deductible in the future in respect of that liability. Is there any amount that will be deductible? Nothing will be deductible. So, the tax base of the liability also is 1000. Then what is the difference? Ta carrying amount is 1000, tax base is 1000. If you see there is no difference, the difference is 0. So, the permanent difference is automatically captured when we compute the tax base. Now, coming to temporary differences, the standard says that the temporary differences can be a taxable temporary difference uh, or a deductible temporary difference. Now, what is the impact of a deductible temporary difference? A deductible temporary difference will result in a deferred tax asset and a taxable temporary difference will result in a deferred tax liability. Now, what could be the situation where you have a deductible temporary difference? That is a situation, say for example, where the tax base of an asset is greater than the carrying amount of the asset. 
Now, what is the impact of tax base of an asset being greater than the carrying amount? In the future periods, you will get higher deductions in terms of depreciation and because of that, you will have lesser tax payable and hence it's a deferred tax asset. So, here I am taking an example of a plant and machinery considering that to be an asset. Okay. So, whenever there is a tax base of an asset which is greater than the carrying amount, in future, you will get some additional deduction. You will get some additional deduction because of which the tax payable in the future will be lesser and hence you have a deferred tax asset. Similarly, if the tax base of a liability is less than the carrying amount of the liability, it will result in a deferred tax asset. Now what will happen? Now say for example, there is an expense payable. Now because there is an expense payable, you would have already booked it as an expense in the books. So you have a liability towards that expense payable, say it is 1000 rupees. Now this expense has not been allowed in this year because it will be allowed on payment basis. So in future you will get a deduction of 1000. So the tax base will be what? 1000 minus 1000 tax base will be 0. So if the tax base of a liability is less than the carrying amount, it is a deductible temporary difference and it will result in a deferred tax asset. Coming to the taxable temporary difference, if the tax base of a liability is greater than the carrying amount of the liability, it will result in higher taxes in the future and for that we have to cre create deferred tax liability. So to summarize the entire discussion, there are temporary differences which are classified as taxable temporary differences and deductible temporary differences. Taxable temporary differences will result in deferred tax liability. Deductible temporary differences will result in deferred tax asset. Taxable temporary differences arises when the tax base of an asset is less than the carrying amount or tax base of a liability is greater than the carrying amount. Coming to deductible temporary difference, if the tax base of an asset is greater than the carrying amount or if the tax base of a liability is less than the carrying amount. The entire deferred tax discussion is summarized in this particular chart you can see. And if you remember this, most of the questions that will come in the examination will be easy for you to handle. Now we have understood about temporary differences and we have also understood what are taxable temporary differences and what are deductible temporary differences. Taxable temporary differences results in a deferred tax liability. Deductible temporary differences results in a deferred tax asset. Now keeping these jargons aside, I have given you, give, I have given you a simple principle or a logic to remember when will you have a deferred tax asset and when will you have a deferred tax liability. Now we will move on to the specific aspects of when can we recognize a deferred tax liability and when can we recognize a deferred tax asset. Right. So we are moving in that direction. So what the standard says is a deferred tax liability shall be recognized for all taxable temporary differences. So what do you need to do? You need to determine whether there is a temporary difference and whether that temporary difference is a taxable temporary difference. If it is a taxable temporary difference, then it will result in a deferred tax liability. Now, there are two exceptions. It says, except to the extent that the deferred tax arri liability arises from initial recognition of goodwill. Now, whenever you initially recognize goodwill, generally in the case of a business combination, in that case, you will not be recognizing any deferred tax liability as far as initial recognition of goodwill is concerned. So, you may have a goodwill recognized in your books. Maybe for the taxation purpose, the value of that goodwill will be zero. Okay. So, in that case, this difference will not be used to recognize a deferred tax liability. That is the first thing. And second is the initial recognition of an asset or liability. So, there is an initial recognition of an asset or a liability in a transaction which is not a business combination. So, we are talking about transactions which is not a business combination. So, we are talking about cases where there is initial recognition of an asset. What is the initial recognition of an asset? Let us say you have purchased a plant and machinery. So, you will initially recognize that asset. So, if you have initially recognized that asset and this initial recognition is not because of a business combination. You have, let's say you have gone out and purchased a plant and machinery. And at the time of the transaction, it affects neither the accounting profit nor taxable profit. So, if at all there is a taxable temporary difference and that taxable temporary difference is arising out of initial recognition of goodwill, then you will not recognize a deferred tax liability. And if the taxable temporary difference arises at the time of initial recognition of an asset or a liability in a transaction which is not a business combination. So, we are not talking about business combination transaction and at the time of the transaction affects neither the accounting profit nor the taxable profit. Now, this second part sounds slightly complex which we need to break down and understand. So, what are we basically saying? We are saying that 
at the time of recognition of the asset there is a temporary difference at the time of recognition of that asset itself there is a temporary difference and at the time of the transaction this temporary difference does not impact the accounting profit or taxable profit now for this we have to take some examples only then we'll be able to understand right so say for example the company has purchased a particular plant and machinery okay and the cost is 1 lakh simple okay now this plant and machinery because it does not meet certain conditions let us say it has been import, imported and these kind of you know plant and machineries which are imported are not allowed for tax purpose so what what happens is as far as the taxation is concerned the there will be no deduction allowed for depreciation of this plant and machinery so for books aggregate depreciation over a period of the life of the machinery will be 1 lakh okay for tax purpose depreciation is zero because as far as the tax laws are concerned this asset is not eligible for depreciation now if something is not eligible for depreciation the depreciation that you will get in the you know for the tax purpose what will be the value of that asset you will say the value of the asset itself is zero for the purpose of taxation right for the books there is a carrying amount of 1 lakh at the time of initial recognition but on the same date if you look at the taxation books or if you say for the purpose of taxation this machine is worth zero and why is it worth zero because we cannot claim any depreciation against this machinery now carrying amount assuming there is no depreciation is 1 lakh tax base is zero what is the difference The difference is 1 lakh. Now, if you go back to the principle that I told you, if the tax base of an asset is less than the carrying amount of the asset, we will recognize the deferred tax liability. But what the standard says is, if the difference arises at the time of initial recognition itself and it is not a case of business combination, this is not a case of business combination. For business combination, we have a different discussion. So, this is not a case of business combination, this is an outright purchase of, a, of an asset this asset which we have purchased is not allowed for tax purpose and hence the tax base is zero why is it zero now if you look at the tax base the tax base of this asset is zero because you will not get any deduction against this in the future this asset will not be allowed as a deduction in the future whenever you recover the carrying amount and hence the tax base is zero there is a temporary difference in the temporary difference we have tax base greater than carrying amount so there has to be a DTL but what the standard says is because this difference is arising at the time of initial recognition of that asset and this is not a transaction related to business combination and this transaction does not impact your accounting profit or tax profit because when you initially recognize this transaction is there any impact on the PNL? no impact is there any impact on the tax profit no impact so in such a situation you cannot recognize a deferred tax liability now the other way to look at this is this is a kind of a permanent difference because for taxation depreciation will not be allowed and for books of account you will be charging depreciation and indirectly we can say this is a permanent difference right if you apply the principles of accounting standard 22 but here the principle itself is very clear which says that except it says that you will recognize a defer tax liability for all taxable temporary difference except to the extent that DTL arises from one initial recognition of goodwill that is okay and second initial recognition of an asset or a liability in a transaction which is not a business combination meaning to say it's originally purchased transaction in the example that you have taken and at the time of the transaction it affects neither the accounting profit nor the taxable profit. So though the tax base is greater than carrying amount it is a taxable temporary difference DTL is not recognized why because of exception okay because of the exception given this is in, in paragraph 15 which talks about recognition of a deferred tax liability deferred tax liability on this will not be recognized now assume for a moment this has a useful life of 5 years so end of year 1 okay so cost of is 1 lakh you charge one fifth as depreciation so balance left is 4 by 5 you have 80,000 okay as far as tax base is concerned tax base will still be 0 why 
because you know you will not get any deductions in the future. The carrying amount is 80,000 and there is a temporary difference of 80,000. Now, can I recognize a DTL at this stage? Even here, I cannot recognize a DTL because the differences had arisen at the time of initial recognition and because it has arisen at the time of initial recognition and it does not impact the accounting profit or the tax profit, you cannot recognize DTL on account of this. Apart from these two cases, that is goodwill and differences arising at the time of initial recognition, which does not impact the accounting profit and tax profit and the transaction is not a business combination, except in these two cases. In all the cases, you will recognize a deferred tax liability for taxable temporary differences. So, we have understood when do we recognize a deferred tax liability. Similar principle is given on when should we recognize a deferred tax asset. Let us have a look at that. A deferred tax asset shall be recognized for all deductible temporary differences. So, for liability it was taxable temporary differences. For asset it is deductible temporary differences to the extent that it is probable that taxable profit will be available against which the deductible temporary difference can be utilized. Now, here if you see we are talking about a deductible temporary difference means what in the future we will get some kind of deductions against the you know differences that we are recognizing. Now, what the standard says is when will this deduction be beneficial to you? Say for example, you have 1 lakh of deductions to claim in the future. Now, that 1 lakh of deductions you can claim in the future only if you have 1 lakh of profits in the future, right? So, you also need to check that it is probable that is greater than 50 percent chance that taxable profit will be available in the future against which you can claim this deduction. So, say for example, you have a taxable temporary difference, say bonus payable is not yet paid. So, when bonus payable is not yet paid, in the future when you pay, you will get a deduction, right? So, there is a deductible temporary difference. Now, this deductible temporary difference can create a deferred tax asset only when it is probable that in the future there will be taxable profits. If there are no profits in the future, then where is the question of creating a deferred tax asset? Or let us say we are creating a deferred tax asset because of carry forward of losses. Now, even for that, it must be probable that in the future there will be taxable profits against which we will be able to offset these losses. So, a deferred tax asset shall be recognized for all deductible temporary differences to the extent that it is probable that taxable profit will be available against which this deductible temporary differences can be utilized. And there is again an exception here. Unless the deferred tax asset arises from initial recognition of an asset or a liability in a transaction that is not a business combination. So, again we are talking about a deductible temporary difference arising at the time of initial recognition of an asset or a liability which is not a business combination and at the time of the transaction it affects neither the accounting profit nor the taxable profit. So, same principle of what we understood under taxable temporary differences, same principle applies in deductible temporary difference as well. Now, one thing if you have noticed that when we were speaking about a deferred tax liability, there is an exception of initial recognition of goodwill. Now, why do not we have an initial recognition of goodwill here? The simple reason is when we talk about initial recognition of goodwill, you may have in the books, let us say goodwill recognized at 1 lakh the maximum amount for taxation if at all some tax provisions allow will only be 1 lakh. Okay. So, there will always be a case that the carrying amount in the books will be greater than the tax base for goodwill. So, that is why you may have a deferred tax liability, but you will not have a deferred tax asset. Okay. So, that is one reason why we do not have that exception of initial recognition of goodwill. So, to summarize, for all temporary differences which are taxable, you will recognize a deferred tax liability. For all temporary differences which are deductible, you will recognize a deferred tax asset. What are the exception? For DTL or the deferred tax liability, the first exception is arising at the time of initial recognition of goodwill and second is arising at the time of initial recognition which is not a business combination and it does not impact the accounting profit or tax profit. When I say profit, it includes loss also. The exception, the second exception also applies to a deferred tax asset. Now, this if you remember, this is a framework for you to remember and understand when do we recognize a deferred tax asset and a deferred tax liability. So, now we have understood that whenever we are recognizing a deferred tax asset, we have to check 
that there is a probability of future taxable profits against which this deductible temporary differences can be utilized. If it is not probable that there would be future taxable profits, then in that case, the entity should not be recognizing deferred tax asset. And what is this concept based on? This concept is based on concept of prudence. Sir, why didn't we have something like this in liability? Because in case of liability, you know that in the future, there will be a taxable temporary difference. So there will be a liability in the future to pay taxes. So anyways, you have to recognize that. But when we are talking about a deductible temporary difference, we must have enough taxable profits in the future against which this deductible temporary difference can be utilized. And you have to look at the facts and circumstances. You have to look at, you know, how the entity is projecting the, you know, future performance. You also need to look at the carry forward requirements of these deductible you know temporary differences say for example there is a deductible temporary difference in respect of preliminary expenses and there is a restriction that you cannot carry it forward beyond two years so you have to check whether there will be taxable profits in the next two years against which this you know deductible temporary differences can be utilized and it depends on different taxation rules of different jurisdictions as far as we are concerned we will have to look at the provisions of income tax act and accordingly see whether you will be able to utilize this deductible temporary differences or not that is one thing the second thing what the standard also talks about is that you may have deductible temporary difference and you may also have taxable temporary difference so you have deductible temporary difference and taxable temporary difference say for example deductible temporary difference is 10000 taxable temporary difference is 20000 okay and these are expected to reverse in the future so what you can do is you can evaluate the pattern of reversal of the deductible temporary difference and taxable temporary difference say for example you know the entity may not generate sufficient profits in the future but this deductible temporary difference of 10,000 will be reversed in the next year. That is in the next year, you know, you will be able to claim it as a deduction. At the same time, 15,000 of taxable temporary difference will also reverse in the next year. That is, it will be, it will be impacting your taxable profit. So, in the next year, if you see 15,000 of taxable difference and 10,000 of deductible difference. So basically, what are we saying? This 10,000 of deductible difference can be utilized in the next year. And for that, you can create deferred taxes. If you remember, we have discussed the definition of deferred tax asset and deferred tax asset arise out of deductible temporary difference, which I have already seen. Now, we need to understand this unused tax losses and unused tax credits, right? If at all there are any unused tax losses, that is basically your brought forward losses or unused tax credit, something like maybe a minimum alternate tax credit. In respect of these, why do we need to recognize deferred tax asset? We will take one example with numbers and see the impact of brought forward losses. Same principle can be applied for unused tax credits and we will see how do we recognize deferred tax asset. Whereas for deferred tax liability, it is only in respect of taxable temporary differences. There is no concept of carry forward of losses or unused tax credit. Now, say for example, we will take only two years, particulars year 1, year 2. Okay. Let us say income is 1 lakh, expenses is 1 lakh 20,000 loss is 1 lakh minus 1 lakh 20,000, 20,000 of loss. Okay. And if you have a loss of 20,000, what will be the taxable income? Taxable income will be 0 because you are not expected to pay any tax on this and carry forward of losses in the next year will be 20,000. So, 20,000 will be adjusted in the next year return okay now come to the second year so here profit or loss before tax tax expense zero profit or loss after tax will be this minus this which is again 20000 now, some of you might be asking, sir, where is deferred taxation? That is what we are getting into. Okay. So, right now we are assuming there is no deferred taxation. We will see year 2 financials and then we will work back and see what will be the deferred tax. Okay. So, in the year 2 also assume that there is an income of 1,50,000 now. Expense remain at 1,20,000. Profit or loss before tax is 30,000. Now, what will be the taxable income? Okay. So, for taxable income, you will say profit before tax. 30,000 less carry forward loss of losses 20,000 taxable profit 
30 minus 20, 10,000. Tax, let us say at 30 percent, you would say 10,000 multiplied by 30 percent, it will be 3,000. So, here you will have a tax expense, I will add some lines here, current tax 0 and here you have 3,000, okay, 3,000. So, what is that? So, current tax expense is 3,000. Now, if you look at this, if there was no carry forward of losses, your tax expense would have been 9,000 because you have an income of 30,000. Now, because there is a broad forward loss which is adjusted, you are paying less tax in year 2. So, what the standard says is, because you are paying less, less tax in year 2, because of losses in year 1, you have to create a deferred tax asset for year 1, right. So, in year 1, you have a deferred tax asset. So, the tax is lower in year 2 because of broad forward losses because you have set off of losses, right. Now, what is the impact of the losses? See, you have loss of 20,000, carry forward of loss of 20,000. Tax impact at 30 percent is how much? 20,000 multiplied by 30 percent, you get 6,000. So, this 6,000 is nothing but a deferred tax asset which you are getting as a benefit in year 2. So, what the standard says is in year 1 itself recognize something called a deferred tax asset, okay. And how much will that be? That will be 6,000. So, a tax expense will be 6,000 and because it is an asset, it is a benefit, I will you know put it as a negative number and here actually should be saying deferred tax benefit, okay. So, your tax expense will be this plus 6000 that is minus 6000 and the profit that is the loss after tax will be 14000. Now, come to the second year. In the second year current tax is 3000 and you no longer have losses to be carried forward. So, the deferred tax asset that you have recognized in year 1 has to be reversed now. So, here you will reverse this amount you get 6000. So, your tax expense will be 9000 and profit or loss after tax will be 21000, right. So, that is where you will recognize a deferred tax asset when you have carry forward of losses or unabsorbed depreciation or unutilized tax credits. Now, whenever an entity has to recognize deferred tax asset in respect of unused tax losses or unused tax credit, the entity has to evaluate whether there will be sufficient taxable profits in the future against which these losses can be utilized, right. So, accordingly what the standard says is an entity should consider the following criteria in assessing the probability that taxable profit will be available against which unused tax losses or unused tax credits can be utilized. So, so the standard talks about four criteria, but the entity can have more criteria to assess whether there will be sufficient taxable profits in the future against which these losses can be utilized, right. So, the first thing is whether the entity will have sufficient taxable temporary differences relating to the same authority and the same taxable entity which will result in taxable amounts against which the unused tax losses or unused tax credits can be utilized before they expire. Now, what do I mean by that? This basically means that the entity has, let us say, carry forward losses of 1 lakh, for example, and the entity has some taxable temporary difference which will may be, you know, taxable in the future against which these losses can be utilized. So, on one side, we have carry forward losses. At the same time, we also have taxable temporary difference means which will create a future tax liability against which the losses can be utilized and the entity can take the benefit of these losses. So, that point of time, you can create a deferred tax asset. Then, whether it is probable that the entity will have taxable profits before the unused tax losses or unused tax credits expire. So, this is pretty simple. What we are saying is, we have losses, whether we will have taxable profits in the future. Actually, B and A are related because out of A also you will have taxable profits in the future and B is independently talking about taxable profits in the future. Then, whether the unused tax losses result from identifiable causes which are unlikely to reoccur. So, you have certain unused tax losses, they are because of some specified cases and they will not reoccur in the future and there is an expectation that you will have profits and against which these losses can be utilized. But if these losses are expected to continuously occur in the future, which will exhaust all your taxable profits, then only to the extent of 
utilization of this you know carry forward of losses you can create defer tax assets then lastly whether tax planning opportunities are available to the entity that will create taxable profit in the period in which the unused tax losses or unused tax credits can be utilized now this is a interesting topic brought in to this is an interesting topic maybe can be applied in other parts of the world but for india as far as india is concerned you will have limited opportunities to tax plan so what this point talks about is say you have say you have interest income now the income tax provisions give you a choice whether you want to offer interest income on cash basis or accrual basis okay accrual basis means what in whichever period the interest accrues you will have to provide it for taxation or you will have to offer it for taxation now say for example we have losses now these losses have to be offset against future taxable profit so to understand this let us take one example say you have interest income and interest income can be taxed on receipt or accrual basis at the choice of the entity okay now because you are providing a choice to the entity that you know they can offer this for taxation on receipt or accrual basis so say we are talking about two years year one year two and also year three let us add one more year okay now in year one losses you have one lakh you have losses of one lakh and this loss can be carried forward only for one more year okay so this one one lakh of loss can be set off at the most in year two now let us say so far the entity had been offering interest income on receipt basis and this interest income will be received in year three okay you will receive the interest in year three let's say received now if you receive interest in year 3 will you be able to offset this losses of year 1 you will not be able to offset because you have to offset the loss in year 2 that is the time limit for which you can carry forward the losses so if at all there are tax planning opportunities what will you do you will say interest income on accrual basis right and because you have given interest income on accrual basis here also you will have interest income here also you have interest income so this 1 lakh may be offset against this interest income in year 2 assume for a moment accrual basis is 50,000 here and 50,000 here so out of this 1 lakh you can set off 50,000 in year 2 to the extent of 50,000 you can create deferred tax asset right so this is what is a tax planning opportunity very limited options actually if you ask me honestly and if you are talking about you know corporate entities and all of that most of them would be following accrual basis of accounting right but still if at all there are any tax planning opportunities then what the standard says is you have to consider the tax planning opportunities to determine whether sufficient taxable profits will be available in the future against which these unused tax losses or tax credits can be utilized now we have understood the meaning of temporary differences and, and as i told you earlier you would have learned about timing differences under as2 now what is the difference between this timing difference and temporary difference see not very relevant for your exam purpose but it is good to have an understanding of this as well so i'll give you two examples and after that example we will discuss what is temporary and what is the timing difference right so say for example we have purchased a machinery and the cost of the machinery is 1 lakh 20 thousand right now for accounting purpose depreciation is say on slm basis and the depreciation is for a period of two years okay for simplicity sake so slm two years so how will the accounting books look like you will have year one and year two and also assume we'll have year three because for tax purpose i'll assume one more year okay so in year one so we have cost or the opening balance of how much 1 lakh 20 thousand right and on this depreciation this divided by 2 because it's for 2 years 60 thousand so closing balance or your carrying amount is how much 1 lakh 20 thousand minus 60 thousand 60 thousand and in the second year 60,000 is the opening balance, depreciation of 60,000, closing balance of 0. Okay, this is 1. Then for tax purpose, what is the opening the balance? 1,20,000 for year 1. Okay, depreciation 
assume for a moment it is SLM and for 3 years. Okay. So, SLM for 3 years means 1 lakh 20 divided by 3, 40. Closing WDV is 120 minus 40, you get 80. Right. So, then next year 80 minus 40, closing balance is 40, then 40 minus 40, closing balance is 0. Now, what if you see here, the total depreciation is 1 lakh 20,000 and here also the total depreciation is 1 lakh 20,000. So, here the total depreciation that is deducted for the purpose of accounting and as well as for the purpose of tax, both of them are same. But there is a difference in timing of the entity claiming depreciation. What is the timing difference here? The timing difference is 60 minus 40, 20,000 here. 20,000 here and entire 20,000 gets reversed in the third year. This is what is the timing difference. Now, you might be asking, sir, is this not also a temporary difference? Yes, the timing differences are also temporary differences, but all temporary differences are not timing differences. What do you mean by that? Say, for example, for the same case, okay, same machine purchased at 1,20,000 and on the date of purchase only after passing the first entry at cost, using the principles in India 16, we have revalued the machine to its fair value. Okay, and the fair value of the machine, say for example, is 2 lakhs. Now, the fair value of the machine is 2 lakhs. We have done the revaluation. Now, assume machine revalued to rupees 2 lakhs. And I am hypothetically telling you that it is done on the same day. Okay, so if that is the case, then for accounting, what will be the cost, depreciation and closing balance? Let us quickly calculate that. Now, the opening balance will be 2 lakhs. Depreciation will be this divided by 2, 1 lakh. Closing balance will be 2 lakh minus 1 lakh, 1 lakh. Second year, opening balance 1 lakh, depreciation 1 lakh, closing balance 0. Okay, third year there is no depreciation. Now, here if you see, the total amount of depreciation that is charged in the books on the revalued amount is 2 lakhs. But for the tax purpose, they will not allow us this excess depreciation. For tax purpose, we will have to consider the cost and accordingly do the and accordingly claim the depreciation. So, here if you see the total depreciation as per the books is different from the total depreciation for the purpose of tax, and this is not only because of timing, there are other temporary differences. Now, one temporary difference here is because of the revaluation amount, right? Now, now, can I say that the difference is reversed? I cannot say the difference is reversed because the total depreciation for the purpose of taxation is different from the total depreciation for the purpose of books if I have revalued the asset. So, here if you say the difference, difference if you see 1 lakh minus 40,000. 60,000 is the difference, 60,000 the difference and 40,000 is the difference in the third year. So, I cannot say that the entire amount is timing difference. Only to the extent that is reversed, that is 40,000 is a timing difference and remaining 80,000 is other than timing difference and it is another and it is temporary difference. So, for calculating defer tax asset or liability, so to compute the defer tax asset or liability, you will take the total temporary difference and not just the timing difference. Okay. So, the thing that you have to understand, though not again important for the examination, for, but for a conceptual understanding, timing difference is when the difference reverses in a subsequent period. Temporary difference includes timing difference, but also includes other differences which do not reverse subsequently. Now, can I say this is a permanent difference? It's not a permanent difference. See, the difference between the asset balance, if you see, difference between carrying amount and tax base. If you see, so carrying amount is 1 lakh minus tax base is 80,000. So, 20,000 is here. For next year, it is 40,000 of difference and the third year, it is 0 difference. Okay. So, the differences will be there. The differences will be there, but ultimately, the net difference at the end of the life of that asset will be 0. Okay. So, that is what is the difference between a timing difference and a temporary difference. So, before we move further, let us summarize whatever we have discussed so far. So, we are talking about deferred taxes and this deferred taxes arises because of differences between the carrying amount and the tax basis. So, whenever you have to compute deferred taxes, the first thing that you have to calculate is the carrying amount. What is this carrying amount? Carrying amount is amount as per books. Okay. Then, 
after determining the carrying amount you have to also determine the tax base now this carrying amount can be for an asset or liability tax base is also for asset or liability okay right now tax base what is the tax base tax base of an asset is different and tax base of a liability is different what is the tax base of an asset tax base of an asset is amount that will be deducted in future so whenever you have some form of economic benefits flowing into by consuming the asset or by utilizing the carrying amount of that asset whatever benefit you get against that you will be able to deduct that amount okay so the amount that will be deducted in the future will be the tax base of an asset and if the future benefits are not taxable tax base is equal to carrying amount okay then for liability the tax base is carrying amount minus amount deductible carrying amount minus amount deductible then in case of a liability if there is any income received in advance for income received in advance what is the tax base the tax base is carrying amount minus amount not taxable okay so either it is amount deductible which is the deduction you get or the amount that is not taxable in case of income received in advance and assume for a moment if the entire income that you receive in advance is exempt that is the amount taxable is zero then the carrying amount will be equal to the tax base we have understood this in detail right so after calculating the carrying amount and the tax base the third thing that we need to calculate or the third thing that we need to identify is differences and what is the differences these are temporary differences which is nothing but the difference between tax base and carrying amount now these differences are classified as deductible differences and taxable temporary differences now the simple logic that you can you know keep in mind is if tax base of an asset is greater then if the tax base of an asset is greater then it will result in deferred tax asset this will be a deductible this will be a deductible temporary difference okay then if the tax base of a liability is lesser this will also be a deductible temporary differences difference resulting in a deferred tax asset then if the tax base of an asset is lesser then it will be a dtl and this will be a taxable temporary difference and if the tax base of a liability is greater then it will be a dtl again a taxable temporary difference so this is what you need to remember if what is the tax base as compared to the carrying amount so always remember if the tax base of an asset is greater then it will create a deferred tax asset so once you remember this remembering others will be easier for you